Can you guys see my slide? Okay. 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 So it's Love of the People Day. It's Valentine's Day today. That's why my slide looks like a conversation heart. <laughs> or it, it's the colors of a conversation heart. But um, it's good to see you all. Thank you for coming today. I feel good that we're studying Thinget together again. And yeah, Naskiyagi, Yayayayagi, Sik Tsik Disi. Jinkat Kadagun Yawahiyadis. It's Wednesday, uh, month of the black bear, and it, 14 days have passed this month. So happy Elizabeth Pradovich Day or week. Today's today's class I was nervous for, but I'm also excited because it's a big day today, in addition to being Valentine's Day. It's the week of Elizabeth Pradovich Day. And so I put some information together, some language terms, and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you and hopefully having some discussion today as well. Who, who is Elizabeth Pradovich? St uh, we'll get to her right now. So Elizabeth Pradovich Day is this Friday, February 16th, and uh, she was Thingit uh, Lukach Adi of the Lukach Adi clan. Her Thingit name was Kach Kachgalat. So go ahead and repeat after me. You can unmute your mics if you want, but repeat after me. Kachgalat. Again, Kachgalat. Good. You guys are sounding good. We have an un. Yep, underline K, and then a nice long low A, and then an underline X. So that K and X sound are going to be pronounced in the back of your throat. And we'll say it nice and slow. Uh, repeat after me one more time. Good, yeah. So that was her thing at name. Um, she was born on July 4th in 1911, and she's famous for being an American civil rights activist and hero. Um, in, when she moved to Juneau with her husband Roy, she was turned down for housing because racism toward Alaska Native people in Alaska was rampant in that, during that time. And so it was common for businesses and institutions to have signs on their doors that said, no dogs allowed, no natives allowed, this business serves whites only. And so it was very common and open and out in the air, um, the racism that infected our lands during that time. That's disgusting. I have to say, it makes me so angry. Yeah, I and so yeah, trigger warning, we're going to talk about some things when we talk about civil rights in Alaska. Um, we're coming from a really dark place. And um, my goal is to help you um, learn about the heroes during the native heroes during that time, and how we as a group collectively heal from that and recover from it as we continue to learn our language. Um, so yeah, when I talk about these things, uh, just keep in mind, take good care of yourself. Um, when you first start to hear about some of the things that happen, it's very common and very normal and human to feel angry and upset by it. And um, don't worry, I'm right there with you. But I'm also going to try to highlight some of the successes that we've had as Native people and how we as a class continue to be part of that 
recovery. Um, uh, Elizabeth Pradovich or Kachalat became president of the Alaska Native Sisterhood in 1940. And she was essential in passing the anti-discrimination law of 1945. So this was before Alaska even became a state. And during that time, it was a bill that was passed in the Alaska territorial legislature when Alaska was still considered a territory by the federal government. Was she part of the Raven clan? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, good, good um, question. She was part of the, the coin. You can see the raven. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a coin. Uh, we'll talk more about this. And it was minted, I want to say, in 2019 and mm -hmm. debuted by the Alaska Native Sisterhood Grand Camp uh, annual convention. I mean, um, but yeah. Well, she in um is that still up and running the alaska native sisterhood yeah it is um the alaska native sisterhood is still very active um and if you yeah we'll i'll talk more about the alaska native sisterhood um but continuing on with the highlights of elizabeth Pradovich day um Let's go on to the next slide. She's famous for this quote she said when she was testifying for the last the anti discrimination bill at the time it was still a bill before it was law. <clears throat> and this is the quote, I would not have expected that I who am barely out of savagery would have to remind gentlemen with 5000 years of recorded civilization behind them of our Bill of Rights. So she was fairly, um, very eloquent and very um, put together when she heard a racist comment and she responded with such um, poise. And so to give you a larger context of that conversation, um, I'm gonna take you to this resource. <clears throat> and it's, um, the one I'll take you to is from the library of Congress of blogs, and I'll just click it. This is a link. By the way, this presentation I'm going to make shareable. If someone can remind me at the end of class to share it with you, um, that way you can click all these links and read more on your own. Um, but jumping to this resource. Can talk about Senator Alan Shattuck in this one. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. right here. Yes. There he is. Yeah. yeah. So I'll read you this um, larger context of the conversation that happened um, in the Senate debate. Let me make it larger because I know I'm showing my whole screen, so it's probably small. <clears throat> okay, so the, the text says, on February 5th, 1945, Elizabeth Pradovich was knitting in the legislative gallery and listening to the Alaska Territorial Legislature's House and then its Senate debate. A territorial senator from Juneau, Alan Shattuck, said, Far from being brought closer together, which will result from this bill, the races should be kept further apart. This was his viewpoint. Who are these people, barely out of savagery, who want to associate with us whites with 5,000 years of recorded civilization behind us? <clears throat> Other senators made their remarks, and when public comment was invited at the end of the debate, Elizabeth Pradovich stood and said, I would not have expected that I, who am barely out of savagery, would have to remind gentlemen with 5,000 years of recorded civilization behind them of our Bill of Rights. She spoke about the inequalities and racism her family had experienced, their inability to get housing and equal schooling because they were indigenous. When she finished, Senator Shattuck asked her if she believed the proposed bill would eliminate discrimination. She said, do your laws against larceny and even murder prevent those crimes? No law will eliminate crimes, but at least you can, you as legislators can assert to the world that you recognize the evil of the present situation 
and speak your intent to help us overcome discrimination. The vote was taken and the Alaska Territorial Legislature passed House Bill 14, Chapter 2, Anti-Discrimination Act. Governor Gruning signed the bill into law on February 16, 1945. It was the nation's first anti-discrimination bill. So that's as far as I'm going to read, but um, something that I think is really incredible is that this is the first anti-discrimination bill in the in the nation. And so um, Elizabeth Pradovich is a, a civil rights hero, not just in Alaska, but in America. Um, So to give a little bit more context of the timeline, because when we think about Elizabeth Pradovich, we think about the Alaska Native Brotherhood, the Alaska Native Sisterhood, the Anti-Discrimination Act. Um, and it's also kind of like, what what was going on during this time? What are the order of things? And so I really like this timeline that was published by the by PBS in their guide for watching a video about the anti-discrimination bill or act um, and the video is called for the rights of all so uh, after I share these slides with you you'll be able to click the title and see the slide or the guide and I'm going to show it to you right now on our screen so that we can read it together because I just think it's so incredible um, the accomplishments that were made by our people during a time of such um, uh, injustice and racism. So, so if that was just in, in Alaska. That's was huge in Canada as well. Yeah, away. The injustice and and the discrimination and 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 all of that, and we're still doing that. Exactly. Still, you know. We're yeah, still that's exciting for our yeah. rights and for you know self government and being recognized i mean i think it's a huge accomplishment for any um first nations person to become lawyers or mps or premiers like we have our first nations premier of winnipeg of manitoba which I think is like a governor for you guys. That's huge. That's the very first one in Canada. So, but we're still fighting. We still got a long way to go. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, that's a huge accomplishment. Thank you for sharing. And so when we think about what role we play in language revitalization, native language revitalization and bearing our cultures and uh, social healing, um, and social justice, we're part, we're, we're a small part in a long timeline of work that's been going on for decades. And like you mentioned, Carrie, we still have a long way to go. But for me, it's, uh, it's encouraging to think about that it's not just me alone on my hard days, or it's not just this class alone struggling to learn or, or pushing ourselves to learn, but that we're part of a long um, history of determined people, native people. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I'm proud to be a native. Yeah. Yeah, the um, social... Or, and I, the, the I just I see person. In, the, <laughs> in the chat, um, if we could ask participants to mute their... Um, please mute yourselves um, while the instructor's moving through the content. Okay, thank you. And we'll have a we'll have a discussion to carry after I present the um, information I put together for you guys. Um, and then everyone can chime in too. Or you could help make me a co-host so that I can um, help with that on this side too. I don't know oh, how to do yeah. that part. I can, one moment. Harry, would you mind m muting your... Um... Oh, yes. Sorry for chiming in. It's hard for me not to. That's okay. Yeah. We'll have a discussion. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have, have more discussions after um, in the support group. Okay. 
Yeah, and I put in time for our discussion too. I just want to present all you the information that I put together, and then um, and then lead to the discussion. Okay, so um, for people who've not who aren't familiar, this there's a movie about ending Jim Crow mentality in Alaska, and it's called For the Rights of All. And so this movie highlights the progress of the Alaska Native Brotherhood as well as uh, including Elizabeth and Roy Paradovich. So the resource I included in the slides is a guide that was published by PBS about the video. And the reason I wanted to show it today is to bring you to this timeline so that we can see the big picture or the at least the order of events that happened. And so they wrote, this guide is designed to encourage deeper exploration and conversations about civil rights, discrimination, the power of individuals to affect change, and the impact of Elizabeth Pradovich and others who fought for civil rights. Um, and there's some commentary by the producer, Jeffrey Silverman on the left, but we wanna focus on the timeline. So in 1867, the United States purchased Alaska from Russia. I say purchased in quotes because they didn't have permission from the um, indigenous people of our lands to make that purchase. Um, they purchased it from Russia. Um, in 1905, the Nelson Act created racially segregated schools in Alaska dividing white children and children of mixed blood who lead a civilized life, in quotes, from Eskimos, Indians, and Aleuts. Um, so that was 1905 uh, when an act was actually put into play to uh, systematize racial segregation. In 1912, seven years later, the Alaska Native Brotherhood, known as the AMB, formed to advocate for Native rights. In 1913, the Alaska Native Sisterhood formed to support the Alaska Native Brotherhood. In 1920, with the prodding of William Paul, Alaska's first Native attorney, fights for citizenship and voting rights took place. So just highlighting that during this time, Alaska Native people were not even considered citizens of the United States, even though the federal government was governing our lands. 1924, William Paul was elected as Alaska's first native legislator and the United States Congress granted citizenship to all Native Americans. Um, prior to that, Native people, in order to be able to vote and have citizenship, had to have, they used to have to have five white people sign for them saying, don't worry, this Native person doesn't speak their language, they don't live in the village, they don't participate in ceremony. So there was a lot of racist bureaucracy going on that inhibited us from having a voice in um, the way our lands were being governed. In 1925, Alaska's territorial legislature enacted a law requiring voters to be able to read and write in English. In 1940, new, a new generation took over A and B and ANS, focusing on racial discrimination. And so this was the year that Roy Paradovich and Elizabeth Paradovich were elected as presidents of the Alaska Native Brotherhood and the Alaska Native Sisterhood. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that uh, prior to this year, the Alaska Native Brotherhood and Alaska Native Sisterhood were focused on getting us getting Alaska Native people organized so that we would have an official voice in government and policies. So that was a long battle just to get to that point. And then in 1940, they started focusing on racial discrimination specifically. Um, not to mention World War II was going on during this time. So in 1941, 
the Japanese Empire bombed Pearl Harbor and the United States entered World War II. 1942, um, the Japanese bombed Dutch Harbor and captured the Aleutian Islands and the U.S. forcibly evacuated 900 Aleut people to camps in Southeast Alaska. In 1943, Governor Ernest Gruning submitted the anti-discrimination bill to legislature. It was defeated in the House and in the Senate, so it did not pass. 1945, the anti-discrimination bill was signed into law on February 16th, and it became the first comprehensive civil rights law passed in the United States. 1954, Brown versus Board of Education in the United States Supreme Court decision determined that separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. So in other words, having segregated schools for native children and mixed blood or non-native children, um, they recognized in 1954 that, that that was unequal. And then 1959, Alaska became organized as a 49th state in America. And then 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. Uh, 1988, that's when the Alaska legislature established February 16th as the annual Elizabeth Pradovich Day to honor her work and um, the passing of the Anti-Discrimination Act. So that's our timeline. Um, Are you able to drop that link in the chat? Yeah, I'll do it and then... Thank you. Of course. I just also wanted to note that 1913 for the Alaska Native Sisterhood, that date, it was uh, 1915. So they were... But we all know that it was the women who were the ones who brought everything together and put the men forward where they needed to go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so 1915. Yes, it's 1915 for Alaska Native Sisterhood. Oh, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the very first conversations that I've heard of the Alaska Native Brotherhood happened right here in Juneau in the kitchen of um, Kut A, who later became Mary Moon. Um, she was taken by the Quakers over in Douglas and then oh. uh, later became Marie Orson. So you will see her name on documents um, through patriarchy just so uh, labeled as a secretary, but really she is the founding mother of the Brotherhood. There has always been a female in the Alaska Native Brotherhood. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah I recognize Marie Orson as one of the founders of the AMB. Um, I dropped that link in the chat for people that want to read the PBS guide. And I don't have the video. I wish I did. Um, for people that want to check it out, go look up For the Rights of All. And there's a reenactment of the passing of the Anti-Discrimination Act. And these are actors portraying Elizabeth and Roy Paradovich. Um, when I saw... Yeah. The city also. There's the City Museum for anyone here in Juneau. That, that movie, uh, For the Rights of All, I believe they're showing that up at the City Museum on Paradovich Day and that there will also be an exhibit. Um, and that's all sponsored by Camp 70, the uh, Mendenhall Camp. Oh, awesome. Cool. So people could go check out the movie on Friday. Um, if you're looking for resources for your children, there's an episode of Molly of Denali, and uh, I'll show you a short trailer, and then you can find the full episode on the PBS app. Um, but this one's just two minutes long. I'm just gonna play it. <laughs> Your grandpa told me what happened to you today. If I had been there, I would have given them a stern talking to. I'm a little glad we didn't have to see that. 
I asked Myrna to tell you about when she saw Elizabeth Paratrovich. You actually saw her? When I was just a little girl. <gasps> you were a little girl? <clears throat> I mean, of course you were. I'm just trying to picture your story. In 1945, Elizabeth was in Juno. Stores in Juno still refused to let native people in. Elizabeth wrote letters and talked to lawmakers. She helped make a law that said you couldn't discriminate. You couldn't be unfair to native people. Finally, the day came to decide on passing the law. I was watching. I must remind you, Senators, that Native people are treated unfairly in this state. How do you think Native children feel when they see signs that read, No Natives Allowed, and aren't allowed in the same school as white children? Today, you can tell the world how we are treated as wrong and pass this law to make discrimination in Alaska illegal. After Elizabeth's powerful speech, the law passed. People couldn't keep Native people from entering a store or movie theater or anywhere else. Elizabeth Paratrovich was amazing. Yes, she stood up for Native people and it changed the minds of so many. This coin reminds us of all the hard work it took to gain equal rights for Native people. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Watch your favorite shows anytime on the PBS. Okay, so that's the portion of this episode of Molly of Denali. I have a few friends who write on this show and I'm very proud of them. Okay, um, the last thing I wanted to show you about Elizabeth Pradovich before we go into uh, Valentine's Day, which in me in my mind they're connected, but um, is the actual bill. So I'll pull it up and I'll make it larger. So this is chapter two of the Anti-Discrimination Act and it's short, so I'm just going to read it, but the it says... Territory of Alaska in Juneau, Alaska, Chapter 2. To provide for full and equal accommodations, facilities and privileges to all citizens in places of public accommodation within the jurisdiction of the Territory of Alaska to provide penalties for violations. Be it enacted by the legislature of the Territory of Alaska, Section 1, all citizens within the jurisdiction of the Territory of Alaska shall be entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of accommodations, advantages, facilities, and privileges of public inns, restaurants, eating houses, hotels, soda fountains, soft drink parlors, taverns, roadhouses, barbershops, beauty parlors, bathrooms, rest houses, theaters, skating rinks, cafes, ice cream parlors, transportation companies and all other conveyances and amusements subject only to the conditions and limitations established by law and applicable alike to all citizens so long list of services here that were obviously discriminating against indigenous peoples and says they can no longer do that section two any person who shall violate or aid in or incite a violation of said full and equal enjoyment or any person who shall display any printed or written sign indicating a discrimination on racial grounds of said full and equal enjoyment for each day for which said sign is displayed shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction thereof shall be punished by imprisonment, imprisonment in jail for not more than 30 days or fined no more than $250 or both. Um, so that's the act. And um, any comments or questions before we uh, switch gears to Valentine's Day? 
Um, sorry for interrupting. Oh, you're good. Um, I don't. Okay, on the rights and so I don't really understand what is that like. What does that mean? That yeah, that's about the rights, and if you don't follow the rules of a, it was it a, of a law. Yeah. Yeah, so it was signed into law that you couldn't discriminate against Alaska Natives for housing, going into ice cream parlors, um, enjoying business, the services that businesses provide. And what the law did was provide accountability through the punishment. So, for example, if you had a sign on your, if you owned a bar and you had a sign on it that said no natives allowed, uh, you would be fined um, for each day that you had that up according to the act two hundred and fifty dollars so was that out of curiosity was that ever enforced or was that just oh we're just showing that to make it sound like we're being inclusive yeah that's a good point and i don't know about the enforcement of the act does anyone else in class have comments or insight on that and is it still a discrimination act um, yeah, enforcement of the Anti-Discrimination Act. Oh, well, yeah. Um, you know, we've been discriminated against with our tribal identification in several different places is one thing. Um, even like with TSA, um, who we are federally recognized tribes. And so I've had to like go up against them. And then most recently, like um, telling them that with these new IDs that they've got to train their employees. There's some articles on it. Um, another one was recent, uh -huh. you know, with, with Juno Fred Meyer had a, um, in their gas station posted a sign that said, uh, native IDs are not accepted for the purposes of purchasing tobacco and that straight up discrimination against us. And so I've, um, went to the ombudsman's and went to, um, um, the Human Rights Commission. So the Human Rights Commission was able to enforce this law to the Fred Meyer took three years, but they just, you know, within the last six months were able to sign that. But I was on a three year battle with them on the discrimination. And so it was enforced through the Human Rights Commission, at least. Wow, that's incredible. This yeah. law that I asked about was just for show. It wasn't really mm. it wasn't really in force unless unless one pushed for it and said, listen, this is the law and you're not no. following it. People had to remove their sign. And then you have and then you have a three year battle or a longer battle just to be recognized. Mm. Yeah, that's um, not. Like, I mean, that that in itself speaks volumes. Yeah, you have to have accountability for laws. You have to have enforcement of the laws to make them work. But getting the law passed is a huge achievement because you're setting the standard for what's acceptable in your community and in your state and in your country. Well, I just wanted to let. Um, um, you folks know too that the coins have been out of print for some time. Um, and, oh, so darn. and even just going to the, the U S mint page now, it's like sold out, sold out, sold out. One says, remind me, but I, I believe the agreement was that they were going to print a certain amount and then they would get distributed and they've already had met that amount. So um maybe we got to try to make a move to see if they can uh produce more of those coins um, i should have got, I would got my hands to... on one while they were out <laughs> I, I would love to have had one of those coins um because i collect coins but i think that's one that is worth well, having in out your collection yeah I did just want to make one comment about tribal IDs very quickly. Um, yeah. While getting my card during our class, I was told that I cannot recognize a tribal ID as a identification for age for serving alcohol. 
uh, so that's something that's still being not recognized that as a true form of ID for serving alcohol. Mm. Stephanie, who's yes. talking? This oh yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie. The tribal ID doesn't, they don't coordinate directly with the state of Alaska. And if you get a DUI and you're not allowed to drink, that's one main reason why they cannot accept tribal identification because we're not linked into the Alaska state system to put the mark on somebody's identification saying that they cannot get alcohol. So, but the other thing that I've been working on is for dispensaries to be able to accept because um, for medicinal reasons of um, medicinal marijuana is that um, that I want to be able to see tribal identification, you know, people to go in and use that because there is no restriction on that part. But the alcohol part is something that they don't, those systems don't speak to each other. So. Yeah, an important intersection you guys are mentioning too is between tribal governments, the federal government, and state government. And so our tribal sovereignty is recognized by the United States federal government because they're the ones we made our land claim settlement with. Um, the state of Alaska is still working on recognizing our tribes as governments and treating us as having a voice as local governments. And so that's one area that causes a lot of problems for a lot of us in a lot of different areas where it's like, we have a deal with the feds, okay, is the state on board? Um, one area that I would highlight that's a huge achievement between the three governing bodies is for example, in Alaska, our Native Tribal Healthcare Consortium, where the tribes, the state, and the government all were able to, um, after years and years of tireless work, decide we're going to basically pool our funds and give Native people sovereignty over their health care. And now we have world class health care uh, here in Alaska, our tribal health care system. So that's a compacting and contracting conversation. The healthcare uh, agreement was a compact, which gives the funds as well as the governing authority to Native people. Um, quick question. Yeah. When, when you were talking about your Native card, is that like a status card like we have here? I mean, we're, we're here in Canada, I have a status card. So... I'm covered by health, prescriptions, eyeglasses, anything that I need, it's paid for by me for medical stuff. And you're just, so I'm understanding that you guys are just getting that now? No, it's totally different. And that was part of my point was we don't have a native card. They're called tribal identifications. We are tribal citizens. And so also we're not members of something because that's watering us down to having a subscription somewhere. Um, but we can discuss some more of that and the differences between what your status card is and what our tribal card is. But ultimately, they are blood quantum cards. And um, and there is no other human beings walking this earth who carry a blood quantum card. Okay, so I know I'm going this is off topic, but what is a blood quantum card? in order to be recognized as a tribal citizen, you have to have a certain blood amount quantum. So oh, anything lower than one sixteenth, you're dropped off, and then and then the federal government no longer has any sort of obligation to you. So oh. it's part of the system to continually genocide us out. So like these tribal cards might not be tattooed on our arm but we, there are something that we carry around. And yeah. again, we're the only, you know. I have one of those cards as well. Mm -hmm. Good conversation. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit because I have some some language I wanna share with you guys yeah. and it's related to what we're talking about. I did. Uh, yeah, so today is uh, and it means love of the people day. So go ahead and 
unmute your mics and repeat this first word after me, which means uh, love of the people. Um, starting with this first sound, this underline X, chen. Yeah. yeah, that's the root word for love. And then if you want to say love of the people, repeat after me. Yeah. And the second word means day of. So repeat after me. Yagi. And the whole name. Yagi. Uh -huh. One more time. Yeah. Good. So the the X A N that's love. This yeah, this is the root word for um to love somebody. So if you say that, if you say I love you, that would be. Uh, stay tuned. I have it listed in one of the next slides. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I took some screenshots from the dictionary of entries that are related to love and hearts. And so this word we just practiced, but go ahead and repeat after me again. Khusahan. Khusahan. Mm -hmm. It means love. And uh, when you take a, a word like this to love somebody and string it together in a certain way you can make a thing out of it so i love i love you is is an action or a state of being love as a as a thing in the world um love of the people specifically would be uh, for the intermediate and advanced learners uh if you continue to look in the entry you can see a breakdown of what each part means. And so Carrie and I were just talking about the root word of love, of to love the action to love somebody. And you'll see it in the dictionary pointed out by this little notation of the square root symbol. So if you see this in the dictionary, you know, oh, that's the root word of, of what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And then follow the arrow over and it tells you in order which each part means. So if you look at the thinget gloss or breakdown, it's k, s, ch, and then they have it in the same order. So k would be someone, and then s is a, another part of speech we'll talk about in advanced, and then this root, this root word ch, you can follow the same notation and see. Oh, okay, that's the, the action to love. Yeah, so another entry I highlighted is on the English to think it side and the word love and we see a similar breakdown of the word. We, this isn't something you would say, it's something for intermediate to advanced learners to learn how to put the pieces together. For today we're not going to um, focus on that, but it's the, uh, we have our same word and then if you continue to read there's an another phrase that we can use at sehan. So go ahead and repeat this after me. At sehan. Yeah. And so whereas kusehan means love of people, at sehan means love of things or love of everything. And so we changed k to at or kusa to at. I'm sorry. Uh, can, you, can you repeat? I I I missed that. I don't. Yeah, that's kind of more of an intermediate or advanced. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of more of an intermediate or advanced point. So if you're brand new and a beginner, don't worry if this feels over your head. This is a multi-level class, so some people are looking for this information. Some people might be like, oh, I don't quite get that. But um, the way I would re-explain it is, if you see a word like this with this k at the beginning. Um, it could be very common for that to be involved with the area around you, uh, such as the weather or people in general. Um, and that's as much as I'll say about it. If you see something like this with ut at the beginning, that tends to mean something or things or makes the term more general. So whereas kusachan is love of the people, but sechan could also include love of things or love 
of everything. So that would be like love of fishing, love of sports, love of things yeah. to do. Uh, yeah, a tsikhan, just love in general, love of our medicines, of our plants, of fish who feed us, things like that. Good question. Uh, another word that I looked up was heart, and I wanted to share this entry, which appears under the English to think it side under mind. But uh, one of our students goes by this name. Go ahead and repeat after me. To wu letzin. To wu letzin. Mm -hmm. One more time. To wu letzin. To wu letzin. Yeah, and that's strength of mind or heart, courage or resolve. So this word to wu is in the inside of so it could be your feelings your spirit in english we describe it as being your heart and your mind uh and this then, one go ahead oh no i was just kind of chuckling at the second phrase there i'm just like oh my goodness uh -huh. um <laughs> Okay, so this next word, sweetheart, is more related to romantic relationships and uh, a phrase that I have written out in one of the following slides is this one. In the dictionary, if you see a dash before a word, it means that something needs to come before that. So for example, if it's a kinship term like mother, brother, father, you need to, in Tlingit, you need to say whose father, whose mother. So you need to put my brother, um, my friend Charlie's brother, you need to say who, uh, we call it inalienable. So it can't be a term that's just on its own. It connects with a person or an animal. Um, same thing for body parts. Uh, so this term will say ugh for my. So if you want to say my sweetheart, uh, you would say, repeat after me, ugh say. Ugh say. Yeah, one. Good. One more time, ugh say. Ugh say. Yeah. This first term has something to do with um, munching on or like chewing. So I'm I'm not sure the context where it'd be appropriate to use that term to call. But I know that this one is like my sweetheart. <laughs> That's one I feel, you know, I would say it. Okay, a couple fun Valentines. Oh, do you have one? Tin. I see you holding them up. Oh, cool. Cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, chan. Okay, Tsaytin is holding up a conversation that says you're not smelly. <laughs> That's cute. Is that what it said? Yeah. That We're so romantic. So <laughs> it is so romantic. Oh my gosh! I don't know how to like take my background off. So then, okay, I'm gonna take my background off real quick, and then I can share it with you. Okay. Uh, choose virtual background, and then I have to say none. Okay. <laughs> he didn't know it said I wasn't smelly. Yeah. <laughs> what Let does me... it say? <laughs> I got to turn away from the light. <laughs> While you're pulling that up, I'm looking it up in the dictionary. So chun, the root word for chun is stink, stench, or smelly. Um, the, yeah, so in the in the conversation heart she's holding up, it says il chun, which would mean, if it was positive, it would mean um, you're a little smelly. But since it says tlech, that makes it negative. It's saying you don't smell. And You're then, not a smelly. Smelly. and I'm beautiful. <laughs> and I'm yeah, yeah, the top one ishakliki means you're beautiful. Oh, thought this was saying I'm not Ishan. Yeah. Oh, 
Not quite, honey. It means you're not smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my not gosh, a that's thing. so funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the third, the third heart, which just has the beautiful lovebird design on it. Oh, oh cool. Beautiful. Where where were those made? Is that in Juno? Yeah, you know, I have a friend who sees the post every year. They'll see it on Facebook and then they um they come and deliver me um some some flowers, some cookies. Oh. Wow. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, that's fun. Um, yeah, I love the uh, Lingout language, Valentine's phrases that come out. Um, these are a couple Valentine cards that my teacher, Rene, shared with us in class that he made. And this one says, Ach in so it means, will you be with me? And this first part means with me. So go ahead and repeat these first two words after me. Ach inch. Ach inch. Ach inch. Yeah. This next, this next particle makes the, the phrase a yes or no question. So repeat after me. Ge. 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 Yeah. And the first three words. Ach inch. Ge. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey. yeah, and this. Okay. Good. Right here. And then this last word. Repeat after me. Igusati. Igusati. Uh huh. I had a good chat this morning, and then one more time. Igusati. Igusati. Yeah. So this last word means you will be with me. And since we see the ge, we know this is a yes or no question. So repeat after me. Will you be with me? Ach in ge igoch seti. Ach in ge Good. Will you be with me? And then this one is fun. Uh, the whole phrase, just try your best to repeat after me and then we'll break it down. Yesiku shwasa ichsechan. Yeah, this first part, yesiku ush, means if you only knew. And so the second part means how much I love you. So earlier, Carrie, you asked, how do I say I love you? And it would be this last word. So repeat after me, everybody. Ichsechan. Yeah, this should be an underline X. So say it like it is. Repeat after me. Yeah. And then. Uh -huh. And then the whole phrase. And yeah, if only you knew how much I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're coming up on time, but I will just show you some phrases. This is one that's been my favorite since I learned it in my first year learning Klinget. And it means we will succeed with love of the people. So a lot of these phrases around love and self-care and healing um, to me are a big part of my healing journey, my language journey, uh, my participation in, social, in the social justice movement. And uh, this is a phrase I try to live by. So this first phrase is, uh, repeat after me, just do your best. Yeah, good. This is an underlying K at the end. So repeat after me. Dlak. Yeah. And then uh to dlak. Mm-hmm. And then Yagach to dlak. Yagach to dlak. Yeah. And then the whole phrase. Good. 
This next one we talked about, uh, my sweetheart, repeat after me. Ach, say. Ach, ach, say. Mm-hmm. And then the phrase, will you be with me? Ach, in, ach, 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 Good. Really good. And the last one we looked at, repeat after me. Yesiku ushwasa ich sechen. Yesiku ushwasa ich sechen. Yeah. Really good. Um, we're close to time. Um, I'll just quickly say that self care and oh yeah, Terry, you have a question. Well, um, does that last phrase or last word, ich sechan, does that come out as I love you? Yeah, exactly right. Good good recognition. This last word, ich sechan, me on its own means I love you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, good recognition. Um, I just wanted to mention how much self-care uh, has been a big important part of my language journey and my journey to become a language teacher. Um, so being Valentine's Day, that can mean something different for everybody, whether it's your romantic partner or your self love. For me, a big part of it is my relationship to self and uh, honoring the work that was done to, in our social justice progress, um, but also internally, my own agency to be kind to myself. So separating that uh, racism and that context of racism that we've come from, um, from my own sense of self-worth. And I don't want to uh, preach to you guys, but I will say that the language journey, being on a language journey has kick-started and supported my, uh, my own healing. And then also striving for native language fluency has forced me to change the way I talk to myself so that I can become more open to criticism and receive it well. Um, being able to take feedback in different forms um, is important for fluency. And also I noticed that when I started talking kinder to myself throughout the day, that I showed up to language spaces more open-minded and more ready to, to learn and receive feedback. Um, I'm not saying to let people push you around or be rude or hurtful to you. Um, but when you start putting yourself out there in the language and doing your best to speak, it can be scary. And for native people, it's connected to our sense of native identity, our native language fluency. And so just, uh, I guess just a reminder that your value comes from you and your ancestors and your connection to land. Um, your, your fluency is something, you know, that we work on, but, uh, just to be kind to yourself. Okay, got two minutes left. Uh, any comments or questions before we go? Would you have a phrase of, of that to be kind to yourself or to love yourself? That's a that's a good question. I don't have the phrase off the top of my head, but I would look it up. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Instead of saying iksahan. Mm. Would it be ah? I love myself would have the reflexive prefix of uh, the sh sound, but to get it right, I can't. I couldn't do it off the top of my head. I could guess, right. but since I'm in a teaching role right now, I'm not, I'm not going to teach you the wrong thing. I have ah. been told that chasechan means I love it. Chasechan, yeah, away. Chasechan, I love it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, sheesh. Uh, Any other comments or questions? Uh, just a reminder that at the top of the chat there, there is a link if you want to join us for some little after class discussion and or sharing resources. Um, yeah, it's at the top of the chat. I'm trying to find the link again so I can put it in the bottom. But I see it. I'll paste it. Oh, cool thanks yeah would you guys be able to email that to us as well um i if did send you a link 
Okay. Um. Oh, should we... we have to call in? Yeah, it's a yeah. separate link. Yeah, I have to close this one because I teach another class on it right after this. But uh... I can ask. I'll ask um, our communications if they can send that out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Gunnar Chish, Johan, thank you for coming here and participating. I sure appreciate you all and I hope you have a good day. Thanks, Happy Valentine's everyone. Uh, Good night. Check your email, Carrie. You have a link in there. See Thank you. you. I'll, Happy I'll Elizabeth that right now. Yeah. day, everyone. Ah. Gunnar Chish, Suye, Kwasatin. Ah, Yekwati, Gunnar Chish.